All right, everyone, this is Ash. Welcome back to King's Speech. Uh, so I finally did a proper channel update, so go check it out already. Uh, it's kind of got the details about you know, what new series I'm doing read-throughs for, uh, all that other kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, go look at that for more details. I'm uh, not going to do a big introduction here, uh, but like I mentioned the channel update, I'm finally, finally, finally uh, getting around to Jeff Lemire's Black Hammer. Uh, so this series, again, I talked about the update, uh, was mentioned a while ago as one that I wanted to get into for the longest time, and I just kept putting it off, putting it off for the longest time. Uh, we're finally getting back around to it. Uh, really excited to do that. Uh, so before we get into it here, uh, as always, I want to remind you all, if you like this content, if you like these videos, uh, please do like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, I recently finally reached my subscriber goal, or current subscriber goal of 169 subscribers. Uh, so I really do appreciate everyone that helped me out with that. Uh, you know, with liking these videos, commenting, supporting them, retweeting on Twitter, all that kind of stuff. So it really does mean a lot to me uh, when you all do that. Really do appreciate it a lot. Uh, so yeah, so without further ado, let us dive into it uh, with Black Hammer number one, as you have Lost on Mystery Farm uh, by Jeff Lemire, Dean Ormstrom, and Dave Stewart. Uh, so this is the Omnibus Volume 1 that I'm going off of these read-throughs uh, for. Uh, so the current plan, because I don't see chapter titles or anything yet, uh, so current plan is going to go for about 45 minutes to an hour for the longest. Uh, so we'll start to see how many chapters and things we can cover within that time. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let us get into it. As we see uh, this old man, you know, feeding some scraps to the pigs, going, ha. Ah, well, to tell the truth, you get used to the place. I never thought I'd say that, but it's true. Ten years today since we arrived. Ten years! Seems like only yesterday, but time flies, and the older you get, the faster it goes. Clichés, I know, but goddamn if they aren't true. <laughs> and as he's walking back into the bar, and you see a cow going, moo, like you said it. Now I say I got used to this place, but the truth is, it didn't take much. This may sound weird since I grew up in the city, but from the first moment we set foot on this farm, I felt like I'd come home. There's just something about the air here. It seems so familiar, so right to me. And you see him just going, like, starting to milk a cow. As a kid, I always wait, or I always wished I lived in the country. Never thought it would happen, but life has a funny way of throwing you a curveball when you least expect it. <laughs> see? Another cliche. And he goes and grabs a little... Uh, pitchfork starts like Collins May. I grew up in the East End, rough part of town. Hell, it made me who I am, but I used to think I'd trade it all for just a bit of quiet, a bit of space. Well, now I got it in spades, and despite everything that happened, despite everything we went through coming here, most days I wouldn't change it for the world. And he's just heading back to, uh, heading back to the farmhouse, you see, uh, this hooded figure just sitting on the stairs. And he goes, Morning, Gail. She's like, Abraham. So like, didn't hear you come in last night. It's like, so? So did you even come home last night? <laughs> she just kind of pulls her hair that like, glass asses down. It's like, what's it to you what I do, Abe? And he goes, It matters to all of us what you do, Gail. You know that. Speaking of which, wear too much makeup for a girl your age. <laughs> you see she's got like, a little eyeshadow and lipstick on. And she just pulls out a cigarette and lights it up with a fuck off, Abe. And it's like, and you shouldn't be smoking. <laughs> and you see her just flying off into the air. She's like, I said, fuck off, Abe. And he goes, do you have to do this today, Gail? Today of all days? <sighs> and he goes inside the house and goes, boy, something smells good. Yeah, just take those muddy boots off before you come in this kitchen. He's like, I am, I am. It's like, yep, most days I wouldn't change it for the world. It's like, morning, fellas. Looks like it's going to be a nice day out there. <laughs> and you see this little robot frying up some bacon and eggs uh, on the stove. Uh, so this head looks very much like the lights. It's got like, a bunch of green lights across. Uh, so it's encased in a dome. And it looks like one of those uh, like emergency lights you see with like little green streaks on it. And you see this red Martian looking guy sitting at the table just reading a newspaper and you see this creepy almost skeletal looking old man with like this gray swallow features 
like phasing out of the kitchen counter uh, next to the robot cooking the breakfast. Uh, so the robot's like, get your feet off the table, Barbalian. Barbalian. So be quiet and get me some more bacon or I'll compact you like the tin can you are, walkie. And you have uh, the weird phasing dude going, fell past inverted stars and nothingness. Good morning, Abraham, but I was not alone. There were many in the infinite, many and none. And Abraham was like, most days, as he sighs again. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Black Hammer. And is he back out on, uh, I assume, one of the other, like, fin or the barn structure? Uh, with the little uh, wind direction thing, whatever the hell it's called. It's slipping my mind right now. And you have a uh, brooding again, Gale. So, yep, want to join me? And you see Barbellion coming in for a landing next to her. Going, don't mind if I do. I could use a good brood. So, did Abe send you? It's like, no. You should know by now that if Abraham wanted me to do something, I'd do the opposite. So, like, but you are going to try to convince me to come tonight, right? It's like, only if you want to. Hell, I don't even know if I'll show up. He's like, really? It's like, it's been 10 years since we were stranded here. So what should we do? Celebrate or mourn? If I'm going to a party, I'd at least like to know the theme. So the real question is, will Mommy Dearest make an appearance? And Gil's like, oh God, I hope not. Then it really will be a funeral. And he's like, you're cruel. And she's like, do you still miss it, Barbie? The way it was? He's like, oh, I don't know. Sometimes. But the way you miss old friends, you haven't seen it in years. Uh, but the way you miss old friends you haven't seen in years, you know that if you went back, it wouldn't be the same as it was. I don't actually miss how things were. I was a different person then. And you see him with this, like this barbarian armor swinging the sword, like this group of like spider ass just lopping off limbs. Going, I mean, really, the whole thing was kind of silly, wasn't it? Sometimes I wonder if it was real at all or just some collective dream we all woke up from. It's like, no, I don't miss our old life, Gail. What I do miss is the freedom. I miss being able to leave. I miss the, the rest of the world. Gail's like, I miss having tits. It's like, we are who we are now, Gail. We can change that. Hell knows, hell knows we said most of these last 10 years trying. Personally, I always liked you better like this anyway. She just kind of gives him a hug in his arms like, what would I do without you, Barbalian? He's like, you'd brood alone. And you see in the barn, you have uh, the mech guy working on some kind of, it looks almost like a sea mine, so it's like an orb with like, the little spike sticking out of it. Uh, and he's like, ah, Colonel, <laughs> I'm sorry, I love that. So the fucking phasey weird guy in the like the space suit is called Colonel Weird. He's like, ah, Colonel Weird, I wasn't sure we would see you again today. It's like, of course you'll see me, talkie walkie. I'm right here. It's like, that's not what I it's just you've been spending more and more time away these past weeks. It's like, yes, well, there's more and more trouble in the parazone. I must be ever vigilant. Are you making yourself a mate, Walkie? He's like, a mate? No, Colonel, it's a new probe. I've been working on it for months now. Don't you remember? Is it a probe? Ah, yes, of course. It's got intent to launch it past the perimeter of the town soon. Just a few more adjustments to the thrusters and it'll be ready. I have a good feeling about this one, Colonel. I think it might finally be the one to make contact. It's like, you never give up, do you, Walkie? You're always such a loyal and diligent friend. And you just imagine like a space battle with an alien like grabbing up those tentacles and he's firing off some lasers. It's like, I, I only wish I could have, I could be the same for you. But ever since, ever since the Parazone, my mind has been, well, I haven't been myself, have I? It's like, nonsense, Colonel. You'll always be my commanding officer. He's like, ah, what's this then? Are you building yourself a mate, Wally? Walkie? It's like, no, I told you it's, and he seems kind of, uh, like, disintegrating almost. It's like, must be ever vigilant, walkie walkie. The Parazone needs me. Inverted stars and hordes of nothing beasts. Can't let them out. And as he phases away, he's like, yes, of course, Colonel. Godspeed to you. And Abraham's like, walkie, I'm heading to town to get some groceries. Have you seen Gale and Barbalian? He's like, ah, no, Abraham. 
but would you mind picking me up some more solder? I'm almost out. He's like, ah, you still working on that thing? It's like, this thing, Abraham, may be our best chance of rescue. I really wish you'd be more supportive. He's like, huh, well, maybe I don't think we need rescue, Walkie. And you see Gale and Barbellion flying down as they goes, well, I do. You're not the one stuck in the body of a nine-year-old, Abe. It's like, yeah, well, some days I'll be glad to trade. Arthritis is killing me. It's like, boo-hoo. It's like, we're coming with you. And as he gets in like this beat up old pickup truck, he's like, fine. And you just make sure you keep the barn door closed while I'm gone. Talkie walkie. Last thing we need is someone seeing you. It's like, yes, Abraham, I know the drill. It's like, put your seatbelt on, Gail. It's like, is that a joke? It's like, you know Abe doesn't have a sense of humor, Gail. Oh my god. And you see, as they're driving away, you have a car. And you see this like, green pale, like, lime green like alien green mint green like light mint green person with like this dark hooded cloak in this decrepit looking old house like these vines and things curled all around it uh watching them all leave going shh calm yourself they're going to town i'll need to concentrate and i don't need you squawking in my ear and you see in the town as they park you have i won't be too long meet back here in an hour yeah fine Yes, yeah, sounds good. Have fun. And you see Barbellion's kind of transform his skin tone like a human looking one. Uh, so this is very obvious like Martian Manhunter stand in for this, right? Uh, and he's like, what's that supposed to mean? He's like, oh, nothing, Abraham. Jehovah. As he walks into the diner, do you have Abraham? Slam, what's the grumpy look for? It's like, I don't remember anymore, Tammy. So that's more like it. She's like, black? It's like, always. Didn't expect to see you in town today. It's like, well, wasn't planning on it, but then I got to thinking. So like, thinking about what? It's like, you. <laughs> it's like, you old dog. Sweet talk like that will get you everywhere. So like, that's the plan. You see at the general store, uh, Barbalian's doing some shopping. And as he's walking back outside of the church, he sees uh, some conversation happening. You have... Don't know about that, but it's nice to be outside. Can't say I miss the rain. And you see, hello, care to grab a bite? As the priest is kind of uh, waving to him. And Barbalian's like, oh, uh, I should probably get these to the truck. So they'll keep. Why don't you put them down and grab a coffee? It's like, well, I guess I could use a pit stop. So that's the spirit. I'm Father Quinn. I just moved to the parish, taking over for Father Drake. He's like, oh, I, uh, it's absolutely goddamn Martian Martin Hunter. Did you have, oh, uh, Mark Marks. I, uh, I didn't know Father Drake very well, I'm afraid. It's like, ah, not a church going man then. It's like, uh, not as much these days. I've lapsed. It's like, well, you'll have to put co the coffee back then, I'm afraid. <laughs> and he's just like looking down at it. He's like, I'm joking. It's like, ah, okay, good. It's like, so, I guess I should make my sales pitch. It's like, the boss is always watching, right? It's like, ah, yes, but it would be great to see you out at Mass. No pressure, but maybe it's time you gave it another shot. He's like, well, I hate to disappoint you, but I think my church-going days may be over, Father. It's like, never say never. The door is always open, Mark. It's like, Mark Margs, what is that? You're Eastern European? He's like, uh, it's Swedish. Is he back at the diner with? So I was thinking I could come by tonight after I finish up at home. So maybe I could come out to the, uh, what was her name, sorry, ah, uh, Tammy, and Tammy's like, uh, maybe I could come out to the farm for a change, don't you think it's time I met that family of yours, Abe, so we've been through this, Tammy, my family is, well, it's complicated, it's like every family is complicated, I just want to, and you hear a ding as the sheriff comes in, hauling Gail by the scruff of her little hood, go slam, we need to talk, and Tammy's like, what do you want, Red? It's like, this is none of your business, Tammy. I found Slam's granddaughter shoplifting the cigarettes from the stop and go. And she's like, get bent, true heart. And Abraham's like, Gail, is that true? And she looks down and is silent. He's like, thank you, Sheriff. I'll deal with Gail. It's like, if you could handle her, she wouldn't be shoplifting cigarettes at nine, Slam. Then again, I should know to lower my expectations when it comes to your family. And you see them just exchanging glares at each other. And Tammy's like, kids get in trouble all the time, Red. It's hardly a police matter. We 
We both know this isn't about Gail. So go, really, Tammy, then what is it about? And she goes, we're divorced, Red. What I do is my damn business. And he's like, yeah, and who you do, right, Tammy? Though you were never very picky. And Abraham's like, watch your mouth, true heart. He's like, or what, Slam? What are you going to do? And he thinks back to his costumed heroes days as he was knocking out uh, some scrubs. He's like, let's go, Gail. I was like, should have, should have beat his ass, Grandpa. You can see Red just like grimacing as he's leaving. And you see later that night as he's cleaning up the dishes, and he looks at the clock and he's like, it's 9:45. Why is he saying it's almost eight? Oh, it is. Uh, sorry, yeah, 7:45, not 9:45. Uh, and he's like, Gail, Barbillion, it's almost eight. And as they head outside, they see uh, this hammer, like a sledgehammer, almost looking thing. Or actually, it looks more like a blacksmith's hammer, uh, lying in this uh, small wooded copse area. It's like, Abraham, are, are the others coming? It's like, I don't think so, Walkie. It's like, why don't we give them five more minutes before we start? And he's like, no point, Walk. They've, they've had enough. I don't think, did you hear, am I late? There's a colonel, Madam Dragonfly. Um, no, no, you're not late. So where are the others then? And you have right here, as you see Gail and Barbellion flying down as Abraham just smiles. You have, well then, I guess I'll get started. I have been thinking about what I was going to say all week, this being our 10th anniversary here and all. But the truth is, well, the truth is you've all really been pissing me off lately. Hell, I know we never wanted to come to the farm, but we made our choices our sacrifices and this is where we ended up that's all history now that's our history and ours alone i tried my best to make this a home for me for you all you do is whine about how we can't leave and how we're stuck well boo-hoo at least we're still alive we can never forget that most of all we can never forget him what he gave up for all of us joe weber was the bravest man i ever met he never backed down from a fight no matter what. And he saved, and he gave his life so we could have this life. We need to remember that. We need to remember that we are still here. It may not be the life we wanted, but it's the life we have. And at least we have it together. And you see, 10 years, 10 years ago today, since they saved Spiral City and disappeared, uh, to most, they don't seem real anymore, like urban legends, ghost stories. And you see, it's uh, the global planet. God. Uh, obviously, you have very much a riff on the daily planet where Superman used to work. So, but they were real. I know because I was there. I was only nine, but I remember the terror, the fear. It's still there in the air. It infected the city and never left us. You have heroes killed, saving Spiral City. It's like they stalked him. They defeated the anti-god and saved us all. In the aftermath, their bodies were never found. They were presumed to have been obliterated in the final battle. They were the greatest heroes of a lost age. Abraham Slam, the original two-fisted crime buster. Golden Gale, America's super-powered sweetheart. Barbalian, the warlord from Mars and Colonel Weird, swashbuckling space hero. And my dad, Joseph Weber, the Black Hammer, Hero of the streets. There's no story I won't chase down. Not when I believe in it. And I tell you this, dear readers of Spiral City, I believe more than anything that they are still alive. I believe that they're still out there somewhere. And no matter what, I'm going to find them. And you see inside this office building, you see uh, this black woman sitting in front of the monitor, zoomed in on a picture of the black hammer, like with the hammer cocked overhead as he's jumping into a fight. And she's just intently staring at the picture. Then you have uh, Black Hammer, it's like America's super sweetheart, Golden Gale, delivers fun, action, laughs, thrills. <laughs> you have Spiral City, the curse of Zephram. You have the Golden Age. You have Maybe I Shouldn't Have Run Away from the Orphanage. Sure is cold out and wet. I, I don't know where I'll sleep tonight. Doesn't matter. Nothing is as bad as spending another night in the horrible orphanage. Yeah, what are you doing out here all alone, little girl? Shouldn't you be at home? As uh, she's walking past this ticket booth, and the guy's calling out to her. Jeff, what? Why? 
Why, you startled me, mister. And what's it to you what I do anyway, mister? Are you a copper or something? He's like, no, Gail Gibbons, I'm no policeman. Just a friend who wants you to be safe. Here, take this movie ticket. He's like, how did you know my name? It's like, he's gone, like he was never here. It's like, I know I should get as far away from this creepy movie theater as I can, but my curiosity has the best of me. Oh, my God. Oh, Christ, of course it is. Of course. God. Oh, cannot believe I didn't see this before. Fucking Zafram. And as she walks into the theater, you have this wise and old wizard-looking man with, like, the big beard, white mustache, holding the staff, going, Gail Gibbons, are you worthy? She's like, who? Who's there? She's like, I am the wizard Zafram. She's like, Zafram? Do you have a boom as a lightning bolt to strikes her through the chest? Obviously a riff on Shazam. And she's like, oh, what's happened to me? It's like, you spoke my name, Gail, and my name is the golden, world, golden word. It is prophesied that when someone worthy and pure of heart speaks it, they shall inherit my power. So this is incredible. I, I can fly and I feel so strong. It's like, yes, you see, I have been imprisoned here in this world between worlds for eons. And now with my power safe inside of you, I can be free at last. It's like, hold on, I'll, I'll get help. It's like, no, I need no help. And I'll always be with you, Gail, in your heart. You only need to say my name. Say it, Gail. Say it again. Say my name. And you see back in uh, the farmland, you see Gail just sitting on a fence. And she's like, closed her eyes. She's like, Safram. And Abraham's like, what was that, Gail? It's like, nothing. It's like, well, time to cheer up. Your ride is here. It's like, oh, why the fuck do I have to do this again? This is ridiculous, Abraham. And he's like, we go through this every year, Gail. We need to blend in. So you need to go to school like every other nine-year-old in town. He's like, but I'm not nine years old, Abe. I'm 52. He's like, and you smell like gin. Have you started already started? He's like, how the hell else am I going to get through this fucking charade? He said, like, Jesus. And you see as the bus uh, driver pulls up to pick her up. He goes, and good morning to you, Abe. First day of school, Gail. Aren't you excited? He's like, oh, she sure is. She could barely sleep last night. Isn't that right, sweetheart? Aren't you excited? It's like, yeah, Grandpa. That goddamn, just goddamn thrilled. As she goes and sits down, and the bus takes off. And you see out in like this little canyon area, you have uh, Walkie Talkie and Barbalian having hauled his little probe out there in the truck. Uh, with Barbalian going, tell me again why this gizmo is going to be any different, Walkie? It's because I've already explained, Barbalian. I have dramatically refine the thruster system on the probe's design. In addition, the shell is much more durable than the last one. So do you mean like the last 10? It's like your attempts at humor are not appreciated, Barbellion. This is only the sixth probe I've constructed. He's like, ah, I love you, Talkie Walkie. I really do. You're a very lovable old curmudgeon of a robot, and I'll help you lug these things out here as many times as you ask. But I really think it's time you considered giving up on this. It's like, giving up? But how else are we going to find our way out of this place, Barbalian? Uh, we cannot leave the boundaries of the town. We all know what happened the last time one of us tried. Sending these probes out beyond the town perimeters is our best bet at finding rescue. It's like, we don't even know where we are, Walkie. We know you don't even be in our... Give me a second. Sorry about that, my dogs are being dinguses. Uh, da -da. Yeah, so walkie talkies like giving up, but how else will we ever to find our way out of this place, Barbalian? We cannot. Oh, no, sorry, I already read that, didn't we? Excuse me. He goes, sending these probes out beyond the town perimeters, our best bet at finding rescue. We don't even know where we are, walkie. We may not even be in our universe. Hell, for all we know, this may be all that's left of the universe. It's like, ah, yes, the pocket universe theory. I've come to think that it's a highly improbable explanation of what the farm and the town really are. The other townsfolk seem to come and go normally. They all have contact with the outside world. As far as we can tell, it's only the six of us who are trapped here. And Barbalian's like, you really think there's something else out there, Walkie? It's like, yes, I do. I just have to figure out how to reach them. You need to have faith, Barbalian. It's like, faith. 
It's like, are you ready for the launch? It's like, sure, let's do it. Want me to do a countdown? It's like, no need. And you see the probe just like shooting off. It's like, so far, so good. The probe is about to breach the established border of the town, and I still have a strong reading. And you have a beep, 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 and a cruise. There it goes. Town perimeter breached. It's like, beep, beep, and I still have it. I'm still reading the probe. I think I did it. I think. And you have a kiss. It's like, no, it's gone. I don't understand. It should have worked. This makes no scientific sense. So you'll get it next time, Walkie. Lucky number seven. It's like, yes, maybe next time. Let me see you back at uh, the crapper, other little farmhouse area. Uh, you have, was it, uh, Madam Dragonfly picking up some wilted flower herb things. Now she goes back inside. She's like, Colonel, it's like, Madam Dragonfly, I, I do not like it here in your cabin. There are too many rooms. I feel like this guy's supposed to be a riff on potentially Doctor Strange or maybe Star Lord or the other ones. Who knows? Uh, it's like, more than you know. And I've told you before, if you don't like it, then don't pop in here like this. It's creepy. And he's like, you're creepy. It's like, what do you want, Colonel? It's like, I'm worried about you, Madam Dragonfly. I am worried that everything we have here may be in danger. It's like, I'm fine. It's like, you don't seem fine. You seem distant. It's like, I'm distant? Please, you spend more time in that draw damn parasol than you do here anymore. So don't you dare talk to me about being distant, Colonel. If you should be worried about anyone, it's yourself. He said, but they need you more than they need me, Dragonfly. He said, that's, that's just not true. They all hate me. It's like, Gale needs you. She's in trouble. She's in a box. There is smoke. She needs her mother. It's like, what? What the hell are you talking about? And as he disappears, you have Spiral City, the Golden Age. Jeff, ha 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 ha! Uh, Robo King is the pinnacle of my undead genius. Spiral City will finally belong to Dr. Sherlock Frankenstein. Jeff, oh no, my arch enemy, Dr. Sherlock Frankenstein, is attacking the city again. <laughs> this guy, I should say the magic word. I should transform into Golden Gale and use my powers and stop that ghoul once and for all. But I just can't. So when I become Golden Gale, I change back into a little girl. Brock Hansen is so dreamy, if he ever saw me like that, he'd never ask me to prom. And if the other kids at Spiral High seem as a stupid little kid, they'll never stop making fun of me. I, I don't know what to do. I can't let Doc Sherlock hurt anyone else. Maybe I should just say it. As so you're hiding out in the bathroom of uh, the school, trying to go, Safram, Safram. Jeff, Gail, what are you doing? You're supposed to be in class, young lady. It's like, are, are you smoking? It's like, shit. And you see that evening as Abraham's uh, herding the sheep. You have a rumble, rumble. It's like, rain's coming, girl. Good thing, too. Wheat needs it. And walkie-talkie's like, Abraham, phone for you. It's the school again. Gail's in trouble. And he's like, shit. And you have, thank you for coming, Mr. Slamkows Slamkowski. So unfortunately, we find ourselves here again, on the first day of school, no less. I had hoped after all the problems we had with your granddaughter last year, we could be off to a better start. It's like, yes, well, me too, Miss Roundtree. I can assure you that we take this very seriously, and we'll make sure Gil understands what she did was wrong. It's like, really, which part? Was it skipping class? Smoking? Cursing? I mean, Mr. Slamowski, she's only in fourth grade. No one smokes in fourth grade. I'm sorry, but your assurances no longer hold much water. With all due respect, we haven't seen Gail's mother around here in a long while. I'm worried that you're raising your granddaughter alone, and you're just not up to the job. Gail's like, ah, what the hell do you know about a Roundtree, you old? He's like, quiet, Gail. He's like, ahem, Miss Roundtree, I understand your frustration, but I assure you Gail has all the support she needs at home. Gail's mother has been ill, and Jeff, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. That rain really is coming down out there. Jeff, oh, now then, Miss Roundtree, tell me what we can do to work with you to get Gail back on track. And I assume that's Madame Dragonfly coming in in her disguise, like looking all normal if gothish. Uh, I was like, Mrs. Slamkowski, as I was telling your father, I, well, I'm afraid it's gone too far for that. I think we need to call child services. It's, oh, I don't think that's necessary. And she does like does a little spell incantation. 
So of course, Kaylin's an ideal student. We're so lucky to have her here at St. Mark's. I'm glad you and your father could stop by so I could tell you how wonderfully she's doing, Miss Slamkowski. And as they're walking out with her, so this is completely ridiculous. I'm done. I'm done with this bullshit. Abraham's like, oh, it's like dragonfly. Someone will see you. And she's like using the match to like take off her disguise. It's like not unless I want them to Abraham. He's like, I can't decide what's more humiliating. Having to go to fourth grade again, being talked to down to by the old prude in there, or having to pretend this hag is actually my mother. It's like if I really had given birth to a spawn like you, Gail, I would have killed myself a long time ago. Next time you're on your own. It's a good riddance. He said, like, Gail, would you please just shut the hell up and get in the truck? And she gets and slams the door. She's like, I'm sorry, Abe. It's like, we're doing our best, Gail. We're all just trying to make this work. Make some kind of life here. It's like, oh, bullshit, Abraham. It's not the same for me, and you know it. You love it here. You have the farm. You have Tammy. But this, this isn't really me, Abe. This is not who I am. And you have a flashback, like you have like a little montage of Gail like slowly getting older. And she goes, Zafram. It's like, there was a time when I hated being Golden Gale. Almost quit. I was growing up and I despised turning back into a kid. But by the time the 70s rolled around, I wasn't just getting older. I was getting old. The older I got, the more I started to enjoy being Golden Gale again. It was like mainlining my own personal fountain of youth. And as long as it was just for a little while, it was great. But then we came here, and my magic word just didn't work anymore. The wizard lied to me, Abe. The magic word isn't a gift, it's a goddamn curse. The farm, the town, whatever it is. It's not the prison, Abe. This body is. And I keep thinking, if I just believe hard enough, if I just keep saying it, one of these times it'll work, and I'll be me again. She's like, Safram! Safram! So Fram, and she just starts like breaking out into tears. And Abraham just like grabs her and hugs, like, shh, it's all right, Gail. It's gonna be okay. So like, what are we gonna do, Abe? So God he knew that gin left. So you think we're ever gonna get out of this place, Abe? It's like I don't know, Gail. I just don't know. And you see how did outer space a shrack as uh walkie talkies probe just shoots out uh past Earth like a meteor. Ah, uh, getting to number three. I'm trying to decide on time. I think I'm actually going to cut it off there for today just because it is boiling hot here right now. Uh, my throat is also just getting really dry from all the stuff I've been recording today already. Uh, we'll pick up with more Black Hammer uh, next week. Uh, this is very definitely a very uh, intriguing start. Uh, so I think I'll kind of gather my thoughts and I'll probably do like a mini review when we do the next video. Uh, but yeah, really, really looking forward to it. I want to see if I can get most of these like comic book references and things. I feel like Madame Dragonfly is like a mix of Zatanna and of Scarlet Witch. It feels like but I want to try to dig into uh, the potential references and stuff in all of this. But uh, yeah, really enjoying it. Well, looking forward to seeing uh, where more of the story is going to go from here. Uh, but yeah, I hope you all enjoy this video. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, if you like this content, you know, please do continue uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, if you haven't already, please do check out the channel update video. It talks about uh, what series I'm going to be covering on the channel going forward, stuff like that. Uh, and until next time, this is Ash. Oh, sorry. I will talk to you all later.